Hello and welcome to the show. I am here today going to be talking about Forza Horizon 5 doing my, I guess, kind of equivalent of a review on the game. Now, I was lucky enough to be sent a little early access to this one. So I've been playing the game for about a week, played a fair bit of it. Uh, so have a, an okay idea of <laughs> what I'm doing with this game. Have a decent amount of experience and so on. Played my way through most of the, the races and all of that. And got a good selection of cars to mess around with all sorts of bits and pieces, so I can bring a, hopefully, fairly decent uh, overview of the game. Let's start off with how it looks. Yes, it is a very, very pretty looking game, and there's lots of interesting places to explore. I mean, I'm up, up at one coast. The map is pretty massive, I have to say. Uh, we, so we started off here, this has kind of got like your deserty area, you gradually move across, there's a volcano to go and explore. There's some, well, there's the big old town city area that's a lot more compact than we've seen from from previous games there's some stadiums to go play around in there's a couple of airfields as well as an abandoned airfield and there's this kind of uh it's not an airfield this one here this is kind of like all of the ancient pyramids and that sort of stuff uh, there's a, a lot of stuff to be exploring around there's even sort of a swampy woodland area over this side as well before we get to another kind of beach so i mean as, as far as the map goes it's actually pretty good. It's pretty varied. If you're looking for really narrow mountain roads and everything, you're not going to find that here. Yes, around the city it is more confined, uh, but even on the kind of volcano path, it's uh, kind of along the lines of what we saw in Fortune Island. Oh, that's a lot of speed down here. Uh, so yeah, you've got your sand dunes over here if you want to do your sort of Baja rally raid, throw stuff around kind of a race and there is a proper Baja circuit as well which is uh, over here actually you know what I'm in the vicinity I've got the right sort of vehicle let's go and drive to it uh, we'll crash our way around this I've been using this for a lot of my cross-country races the Nissan um, I like it as far as a off-road vehicle goes for about 900 horsepower and A-class kind of you pointed in a direction I think we've got a dust storm forming uh, it does appear like we do so this is one of the effects that, that can happen uh, you can end up in the middle of the dust storm. Now, when you're setting up races, you can force it to have dust storms. All this just kind of happen naturally as you go around. Uh, we have wandered into, yeah, this is the uh, the, uh, the cross-country outpost. Is This is the off-road racing circuit. Typically, we're not going to really get much vision. But you've got this sort of deserty area. Ooh, that's the stairway there. Uh, <laughs> you've got this kind of deserty off-road area. The circuit, the off-road circuit, is actually really cool. Uh, kind of much better than the tarmac circuit-ish that we get. Sort of like a half circuit. Uh, we'll go head over there and I'll teleport my way over there in a second. But yeah, uh, we'll see a lot of this circuit, I have no doubt, um, because it's yeah pretty damn good uh, for racing around. And I was using it for testing some stuff, so we will see that in... Uh, the very near future. So you've got your deserty area. You've got the volcano we kind of see in the distance. I'm just going to teleport over to what is probably one of the more starker contrast uh, in terms of areas. Just to kind of, yeah, show off the, the, the variation, if you like. We'll get out of the dust storm as well. Oh, apparently I've been disconnected. And then you've got this kind of place as well. So as a place to go exploring, yep, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, I have to say. I've enjoyed wandering around the map. I've enjoyed the various different races and all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, you want to go race around inside some old, whoop, crash into some old temples, probably won't appreciate that one. I see a lot of potential for messing about, and <laughs> that's that's often what I look for in a game. Is there potential for me to do a lot of silly things? Is there potential for me to do all sorts of varied things as well? And yeah, yeah, we have we have definitely got that. Map, the map is good. Uh, one thing we have mentioned, now I didn't really notice this so much when playing it, I guess it's more perhaps something you notice in a video and also with YouTube compression, uh, motion blur with the game, a lot of people were not a great fan of that. Uh, now you can't, I can't find a way to turn it off. Um, I have changed my graphics, I thought I'd set this to performance rather than quality. Uh, apparently I hadn't already changed, reverted itself at some point. Um, there isn't an actual setting. If we go into here, I'll just show you quickly. Uh, we go into video. There's not a setting for like motion blur and all that kind of thing. Unless I'm missing something, in which case, by all means, let me know. Uh, but I know on PC, I'm not sorry on PC. You can do stuff, but on Xbox, it doesn't seem to be an option. Now, it's not something I noticed when playing all that much. Now, that might partly be to the fact that I'm concentrating on driving and not really looking at scenery. And YouTube compression might play a factor in that as well, not helping matters. Um, but that's. It's not something that's bothered me in the slightest but it's something that uh, 
which apparently uh, has apparently bullied others from videos. So, yeah. yeah, it may well not be much of a, an issue when you're driving. It's annoying that there's not more graphic settings for the game on console, though. Like, <laughs> it's the, the consoles are good enough that we could, should have some buttons to change that sort of thing if it's something you don't want. I don't know why it's not an option here, uh, but that is how it is. And it's not unusual, sadly, that that's a thing with games anyway. Yeah, if that annoys you, that, that, that that's a thing. Sadly, I can't, you can't really seem to do much about. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of visual side of things done. Uh, let's go into driving physics. For this, we're going to jump into a different car. Uh, we are going to go and grab, let's go grab something a little bit quicker. Uh, we will go, uh, as, you, as you can see, I played through a fair bit. I've got all sorts of stuff on lot. Let's go and grab my uh, Jag. I like this Jag. Uh, handling physics, if you've played a Forza game before, you've played Horizon 4, this is going to feel very familiar. Okay, it's along similar lines. It is not identical. There are some differences in this one. Now, for this, we are going to go and... You know what? Let's go do a race. Let's go and... There's a lot of icons, so we're going to focus on a road a road race. Uh, there is, because this, this car is a lot more handling based, we're going to find a twisty little circuit. You know what, let's go, it's not actually really that twisty, but let's go over to the, this is kind of a racetrack, it's sort of like an abandoned racetrack that sort of loops around with some normal rows in as well. Oh, there you can see the dust storm, don't know if that's going to turn up. Uh, yeah, handling physics. It is a little bit, a little bit different. Now, the majority of the differences that that I have come across what I have felt while driving. Admittedly, you know, I've not had huge, huge amounts of time to know all the intricacies, all the ins and outs. It's mostly to do with traction of the vehicles, the way they put the power down, and also to do with locking up the brakes. That's one of the bigger things that I've noticed. Actual sort of speed through the corners feels very, very, I say familiar. The actual sort of turning of the cars all feels along similar lines, but uh, getting the cars off the line and if the vehicle especially the powerful vehicles if you're sat there spinning the wheels a little bit uh, it is different it's difficult to describe but it kind of needs a little bit more uh, nuance in the control getting them going they tend to be even lower power cars tend to slide around a bit more um, so it's it, it takes a little bit of getting used to it. it's nothing crazy and uh, now brake lockups are something that are a little bit more pronounced in this game than we've seen in actually a lot of Forza games uh, so uh, of course, if you're running with assists, things like traction control and ABS, some of the stuff I'm saying here is not as uh, relevant. But if you lock the brakes up in this one, which I'll we'll do here to try and show you, uh, I can't do it intentionally. It's really difficult to do it. In, if it happens by accident, uh, well, it, it, you know, funnily enough, more natural. Trying to intentionally lock up and show you is a little difficult. But if you lock the brakes and you get the car kind of stuck with the brakes locked, it's kind of difficult to unlock them. And if the brakes are locked, the car is going straight. You're really, really not turning. Previous games have been a little more forgiving in this regard. I wasn't expecting this from Horizon to be a little bit tougher if you get things wrong. And this car here uh, is running full slick race tyres, I think, if I remember rightly how I built it. Um, so we have got so much grip that I can kind of get away uh, with some quite aggressive braking, but it's something that's going to, if you run without assist on, it's going to take a little while to get used to. It's something that is going to come up, and I like that. I like that a little bit extra. extra. Again, it's not crazy big differences here. If you're familiar with Forza games, it will feel familiar uh, going into this one, but they're just little differences you've got to get used to. But overall, the handling is good fun. Yeah, this is not a crazy realistic simulator. Of course it isn't. That's not the point of Horizon, so to speak. But it's good. The cars are fun to drive. Uh, there's certainly a decent challenge to them. Uh, and when it comes to kind of upgrading, there's a whole whole raft of new options, new parts uh, that you're going to have to deal with. Customization is generally better on this. You've got more engines you can swap into vehicles, more things that you can be doing with them. Some crazy, I mean, we saw the DeLorean I did a video on yesterday with some crazy engine swaps. There are some ridiculous engines going around. Uh, I mean, my, my favourite ridiculous one is there's a diesel engine you can put in a Viper if you so wish, and I like that those are that there are more options. As I said before, to me, a racing game is most fun when it gives you as many options as possible. When it gives you a lot of silly options as well, you know, I can have a whale of a time with that, but just give me all of the options. So yeah, you can put wacky engines in cars. Okay, you know, you can't put the Funko engine in like a Mini, for example, which, I mean, it would be fun, but <laughs> there is still a a level of sanity to most of the cars, but 
there is just more uh, options for stuff. There are more options in terms of tyres. As I said, this car here, we're driving the Jag, is running on the full racing slicks, which are super, super grippy. Uh, it gives the car crazy amounts of grip, but of course, use up a lot of PI. So it'll be interesting to see how things are going to evolve in terms of how you build cars for races. I know how, how we do races, a lot of what we do is, is different to just general leaderboard stuff, of course. Uh, but I'll be interested to see how it pans out, because we kind of have, we build multi-purpose cars for team adventures or specific stuff, that sort of thing. Um, it's always going to be an interesting one to uh, to see how it pans out. Um, I do like this this Jag that we have going on. We'll, we're, we're by here, so we can go have a quick look. Are we going to level up? We are going to level up. Cool. We'll go have a look at the garage. Oh, we're going to get a Challenger Demon. That nah, I like. <laughs> Pleased with that one. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have a quick look at the customization on the stuff. I mean, it's... Okay, it's not the most crazy, crazy, ridiculous in-depth customization you'll ever see, but it is generally a little bit better. I don't quite know where the exact festival entrance point is, so we'll turn this on rather than blindly running around. Uh, doo -doo -doo, over here, we will go and slide the jack. You see here, even with the slick tyres, uh, this car, if you are a lunatic, this is slick tyres and 400 horsepower, and you can still really get the car losing traction, so when you start going up to crazy stuff, it's a little bit different. Uh, da -da. Let's go have a look in the upgrade shop. This might not be actually be the best car to show you uh, stuff on, but even with this car, for example, we've got a 5 litre V8 supercharged engine. We can put in it a racing V12, a 7.7 litre V12. Um, and this is in a car that you would perhaps expect to maybe have one engine swap option in previous games. I mean, aspiration, all of that. Uh, I will say, I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of this new upgrade screen. While I like that you can rev the engine up in here, just being silly, really. This feels a little bit... I say almost more clunky than we've seen in previous games. Now, I think they've changed to this style, this layout, because there are more options of, you know, bits and pieces you're doing. When you go to tyres, for example, here, we've got street tyres, sport tyres, slicks, semi-slicks, drift tyres, off-road tyres, off-road race tyres, drag tyres, and snow tyres. I mean, you've got a lot of options, so I guess this was the better way to do it than have... Everything scrolling on the bottom. To me, it's just a little bit, I don't know, it, it feels a little bit more cluttered uh, than previous ones. But it works. I'm sure we'll very quickly get used to it. Um, but yeah, again, this is already a minor thing. It does feel a little more cluttered. Uh, and then there's a few of the menu screens as well that do feel a little bit, uh, a little bit more messy almost. Uh, if we go into here, what do we want to go and have a drive with next? Uh, I don't know. Let's go sort things by performance class and have a pond. We'll have a peruse through the garage as the mad DeLorean. Uh, what shall we grab next? I, You know, there's there's so much to choose. Oh, you know, I'll go with this. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I, I thought I'd mess around and build a drift car, and I built the hammer because... It's, I love this car. It's such a ridiculous vehicle, and I figured it would make a good drift car because you can give it a thousand horsepower. And funnily enough, it works. Uh, <laughs> it, re it really works. It really works indeed. Uh, right, so... Actually, let's, do, let's talk about car list next. Uh, the car list is good on Horizon 4. There is, uh, Horizon 5, sorry. There is no doubt about it. However... And there is a however on this one. Yes, it is It is pretty damn good. It's not perfect. There seems to be some weird omissions from it. Mostly from the Italians. Alfa Romeo, Lancia and Fiat are not in the game. I, I seem to remember reading, hearing somewhere they're supposed to be on the way. I don't know at what point they might turn up. And, you know, licensing issues do happen. I don't know. I don't know if that is the case here. Uh, however, there, there is a bit of a strange omission from this one. It's not going to stop me from enjoying the game, and hopefully they will turn up at some point. But still, it's yeah, strange to not see them there. I mean, the, as I said, the car list is good, although it's not crazy different from what we have seen in Horizon 4. Now, I'm sure we'll see plenty more cars added either via Car Pass, or they will be added via the, um, what's it called? Forza Horizon playlist thing. And that's how, you know, you're unlocking some of the cars. You can't buy every vehicle from the auto show. Uh, some vehicles can only be unlocked via events that go on in the Horizon playlist or via wheel spins and that sort of stuff, which not everyone likes that system. It can be a little bit annoying if you miss the event, you know, you're away at the time a particular event is run and you miss the car you really want. It also kind of, 
it is difficult. Yes, I can understand the annoyance about missing out on a car you really want, but also it's kind of fun to have that little bit of exclusivity. You know, you can get a crap ton of money, but might not be able to mean you can just go buy everything. It makes it a little bit more special when you do unlock certain prize cars and all of that kind of thing. It's the same system. Again, if it annoys you in Horizon 4, well, it's going to annoy you in this one. If, like me, you're not too fast, you it's kind of a little bit of fun, then... What the? <laughs> it's just a fly. I guess they did the stunt jump off the runway. <laughs> Random flying car. Um, yeah. That's, that, that's how the system is working. I'm personally quite okay with it. I will say... Get, get a little bit of spoiler warning. If you don't want to know what the barn flying cars are, then skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp or whatever in the screen to tell you what's what, when to skip to uh, it's because I'm going to talk about them for a second um, but the barn find cars aren't all that amazing if I'm honest with you uh, the Jag that I was driving the XJR15 is the one that I'm most was most excited most interested in the rest of cars that we've mostly seen before but I think the only two that we haven't had in previous games were the rally raid style 911 in fact I can Actually, no, I'm not going to show you the list again in case... I know some people don't like to know that stuff, so I won't do that. But uh, there's, yeah, a Rally Raid 911, and there is the GMC uh, Jimmy. They're, I think those are the only two unique cars from there. The rest are ones we've seen before, like the Ford F100 pickup truck and that kind of thing. Toyota Baja truck. We've had them in previous games. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. I, I was hoping for a little bit more from the... From the barn finds, I mean, the, you know, there are there are cars that are not in this in this game. Certainly at the moment, things like the Peel, uh, for example, isn't around. Uh, I think you know maybe it kind of makes sense. It was a British car, so it makes sense for a British setting and all of that sort of thing. There are yeah, there are some cars that haven't transferred over. There are new vehicles like the you know some new hyper cars like the AMG. Uh, let's go, you know, what? let's go grab the AMG while we're at it. Uh, do, 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 manufacturer, that's the one we want. Uh, this one here, the AMG One. Yeah, there's some new high-end hypercars. It's not a crazy different car list, and I'm sure it is going to grow plenty as time goes on. I did just change to this while I am off-road, which probably wasn't the cleverest thing. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like your all-up-to-date hypercars, there's not, there's going to be a car you want that's not in the game. There always is, whatever happens. Uh, the list is good. There's plenty to mess around with, plenty to have fun with. Uh, so I have no doubt you'll be able to uh, find ooh, lots of entertainment value. I saw a bonus board, thought we'd go and grab it. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, as far as progression goes, shall we go and you know what? There's a race over here. We're gonna go. We're gonna go and do another race. Um, yeah, as far as progression, as far as money goes, uh, as I mean, as you can see, I have nearly 10 million. I've bought all the houses. I have a decent selection of cars. I've got nearly 200 cars at the moment. Yeah, okay. I've played this game for quite a lot over the last few days, um, but the I guess progression, the earning of money pretty balanced from what from what I have seen again from what I have ex experienced so far I'd say it uh, works quite nicely what do I want to drive uh we're going to you know what actually I haven't driven the Valhalla I unlocked it somewhere I haven't actually had a go with it so sure this might go terribly for me but we'll have a drive of it um yeah so you earn credits you earn experience as you play through the game there are these accolades kind of a series of challenges that uh, that you do some are just win a race complete a race some become a lot more specific like win a race with a specific car three star a danger sign with a sp specific vehicle and all of that kind of thing uh, there is a lot to be doing in all of that, and you learn XP, you level up, you'll get wheel spins, and wheel spins are where the majority of your money is going to come from. Oh, okay, that's a bit understeery through there. Uh, I got used to the, the shag with its slick tyres. Um, yeah, wheel spins are where the majority of your money are going to come from, and you will be pleased to know that they are much better than they have been in Horizon 4. Yes, you can still win clothes and horns and emotes and that sort of thing, but there's a lot less of them per wheel spin, if you like. There's still quite a lot of horns to unlock, but you don't get as many of them as an option. Basically, you're not going to win as many for it. It takes a lot longer to win them from the wheel spins because it's just less appear. I don't know how much stuff cycles around per wheel spin, but let's say 50 stuff cycles around per wheel spin. That's probably a bit too much. But where it might have been 20 useless guff previously, now it's only 5 as a rough estimate on things like that. So you win more interesting things. Good chunks of money and interesting cars. That's what it should be. That's pretty much what everyone wanted, and that is good. The only downside that I have seen is if you win a duplicate car, it doesn't seem like you can sell it. 
uh, like you could in Horizon 4, because that was another good way of making money, especially in the later game, when you had built up a nice collection of vehicles. If you got something, you could get, a, you know, you got a supercar or something, you could sell it for what was actually quite a nice amount of money. Oh, hello. <laughs> that didn't quite go to plan. Oh yeah, you can sell it for quite a good, a good chunk of money. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case here, but I've certainly not really found myself too much problems with money. Uh, the economy is a little different in this one. There is not the same crazy expensive houses, although some of the classic cars are a lot more valuable. Uh, we're talking, the Shelby Daytona is the most expensive car in the game at 30 million credits, which is a lot more than anything we've seen in previous games, although the most expensive house is only 5 million, so, you know, it sorts itself out. As far as a roughly balanced economy goes, yes, this airs on the side of give you a load of stuff, but I think that works for Horizon game. You know, this is a game more about having fun with cars, exploring, messing around, enjoying driving cars. It's not about grinding countless races to try and get one supercar. I think it strikes a half-decent balance, and especially having you know specific cars you've got to unlock in specific ways. I'd, I'd say it works. I appreciate it. might not for everybody. Some people might think this game is too easy to throw cars at you, and I could see where you were coming from on that one, but I would rather have a game that aired on that side rather than make me work too many hours to try and get one car. You know, I just want fun. <laughs> I want fun from my game, and that is what this does really, really well. You can't, can't you kind of can't help but have fun. I mean, as far as the racetracks go as well, uh, there is a great variety. As, there's a good variety of, of scenery to drive around. The tracks are really good. There's still the lack of off-road, proper off-road circuits. This is something that does kind of annoy me a little bit. I like my rally racing, I like my off-road racing. And there are two fully dirt circuits. There's the Baja track that I drove around, there's one, you know, we'll go, we'll go travel to the other one. Um, there's one at the top of the map. Ooh, hey, I've got one of my favourite cars in the world, the TVR Speed 12. Oh, because I hit level 175. Here's the wheel spin. Oh, okay, we are going to get an emote from this one, but I haven't got very many of them. So, <laughs> look, I'm not going to be too annoyed about occasionally getting an emote. And I've also got a TVR Speed 12. So, funnily enough, I'm quite happy. Um, but yeah, circuits. So, I mean, we all just, I'm just going to turn off a lot of these just so I can show stuff. Uh, dirt circuits. Now, of course, I, I like my off-road racing. I like messing around with rally cars. A lot of dirt circuits, much as we've seen in previous Forza games, like here, here for example, is half dirt, half tarmac or you got down here i mean i like this this layout here this is a fun little circuit but again we're only talking really half dirt and i was sort of hoping for more full off-road layouts now we, as i said we do have uh i don't know why that's showing is new I think it's maybe the accolade i've completed all the races i thought um again like here the the main i guess yeah, the main off-road circuit is going to be the one over here that's a fun layout. It's actually a really good layout to drive. Now there is... We're going to teleport over here. I'll just mess around with this one. There is the ability to create tracks. However, I don't think it's quite... The, the, bit this, the ability to create tracks that's in at the start, launch of the game, is the same as it was in Horizon 4, which means you can't set your own start point. You have to use... Like here, for example, I can create a route from this location, but I'm having to use this setup. Like this, this start point and the direction this start point is facing in, which is a bit annoying. Um... What car am I going to go use? Uh, let's go use my BMW. This thing's bloody good. Um, and you can't put in walls or you can't put in props. Now, I believe that is something that's been said is coming later. At what point? I don't know. Currently, the track creation is still the same as it was in the past. So you can put down checkpoints, but that's it. And you have to use set start locations and all of that kind of thing. There is the ability to create rule sets using the Horizon Lab, which I have looked at briefly. It seems quite comprehensive. I haven't figured it out yet. There will, I'm sure I will be doing videos on that in the future, uh, but that is not... The, 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 there's not quite yet. I can't really talk too much about it. It's there as an option. It seems like you can do some really cool stuff with it in terms of creating game modes and, and creating all sorts of things. It's quite complicated, which is good. gives you lots of options, uh, but yeah, I've been kind of focusing on, on the racing and driving aspect, and I haven't had time to really figure it out. I had a bit of a look when, oh crap, this is actually quite detailed. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit, and I haven't got around to it yet, because I got distracted doing other things. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I will look forward to if we can get a proper course created, if we can, you know, have the ability to place start lines and place walls to make tracks a little bit better and easier to follow as well. For if we're creating custom circuits, as it is, yes, I can place the checkpoints, but 
if we're trying to run run races there, either too easily exploited a little bit or can get a little bit janky, as we've seen in previous. You, you can make it work, like don't get me wrong, you can still have fun with it. It's still a cool thing, but I'm I'm holding out hope for the ability to to place props and place start lines and and work with all of that so you can just expand it there are more tracks in this as you would expect there is more there is a bigger map there are more locations so there are a few more uh, sort of circuits to choose from and as I said there's a great variety of them especially the tarmac circuits I do enjoy that I'm not really much of a fan of the point to point races I say I'm not my I prefer circuit racing to point to point it's just how it has always been so I will end up inevitably spending more of my time doing these point to point uh, doing these circuit races, sorry. The point-to-point -point races, though, that I've driven are fun. And if you like your longer distance races, the likes of the Goliath race is much longer in this, and the Colossus as well. So there's a tarmac one. Uh, there's basically two about 30-mile laps, uh, if you want to get into that, that loop their way around the island. Even running high-end cars takes a good... I can't remember how long it took now. I want to say, like, 20 minutes, but I could be very wrong on that, because uh, I did them a while ago now. But yeah, if you like your long distance races, they they, they, they are in there. Uh, they are longer than they were at Horizon 4. Again, for me, they're, they're not really my cup of tea, but they were fun enough circuits, you know, because you're going through interesting environments. Uh, you're taking all, you, you, you're tackling all sorts of different roads and all sorts of different bios. I mean, like, this is a spectacular track, i got to say. <laughs> you're racing around the top of a volcano, you get that amazing view as you head down towards, I guess, what is technically Turn 1. So, yeah, and the volcano is definitely made the most of. There's, as you can kind of see on the mini-map, there's these curvy roads. There's a dirt road up one side and there's a tarmac road up the other. So, if you want to go and do your drifting on the tarmac, like, there's a drift zone basically all the way up the tarmac road as well. If you want to fart around uh, trying to get a lot of drift points, you can. On that one, that was where I was messing around with the hammer uh, when I built it. I don't know why I decided to build a hammer as a drift car, but it was fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> we kind of went for it. Um, but, yeah, so circuits... They're good. There's there's a there's a lot, a lot of good circuits. Um, one, so one little criticism. I guess it's actually probably more of a physics engine criticism than a circuit criticism. Uh, I don't. Again, this is a really difficult one to show you. It's I can describe it, but yeah, to actually show you um, is is tough because you probably won't quite get the same feedback. But if you're racing around at high speed, so we're going to grab an S2 class car. I'm going to grab an S2 or, or an S1. Something that's on that I know is not going to like going off-road. Uh, so something rear-wheel drive with a lot of power on tyres not built for off-roading. So if I go and grab... You know, I'm going to grab this thing because it's kind of cool. Uh, so this Forza Edition Mercedes slick tyres, 1000 horsepower rear-wheel drive machine. Okay, uh, Not going to start over here. Let's go and teleport to somewhere where we can buzz around the countryside at really high speeds. Uh, you know, let's go towards the top. Essentially, if you're driving a car like this and you run a little bit wide, the game is very forgiving. It almost feels like it forgets that you're in a rear-wheel drive slick tired car and goes, oh, you know what, we'll give you a second to gather this back up before... Can I show you? Like, you kind of... You get a moment of grip before it runs out. Okay, there's a wall on the inside there. You kind of get this weird moment of grip before it decides, oh wait, you know what, stop being an idiot now, you've you've kind of asked too much of the car, like there. And I don't like that. Now, if you want to have that as a setting for, you know, lesser experienced drivers, that's fair enough. Like the friction assist that you could put on in more motorsport games, but like there, that, that's probably a good example. That should have been a big accident for me. And the reason why this, ooh, that's a dirt road, that's not... For a good example, uh, the reason why this annoys me is when you're racing in some of the... Again, this is gonna, not going to bug everybody. It kind of is a little bit irritating to me because trying to find the limit is a bit strange. You know, I want... If, that, if I'm off the tarmac, the edge of the tarmac is where the limit is. It should be where the limit is with a vehicle like this. If I'm across the grass there, I shouldn't get away with that. Oh, and it makes it then judging to try and find the limit when you're racing, when you're pushing the car hard, quite difficult because you're trying to find this almost moving goalposts. You'll get away with something, but it's how much do you get away with. I I was kind of like, if I'm on the dirt, that's it. Like I, I want it to be an immediate reaction if I'm onto the dirt. Uh, and I don't remember that being a thing in, in Horizon 4. I don't remember that being a thing in other Forza games. I I don't know. Maybe it's just me that annoys. It may, you know, it might just be one of those little piggy things, but yeah, I kind of want... 
if you want to have that as an option, go for it. But I want that to be something I can turn off. I don't, I don't like because the the leeway is just an inconsistency to me. Uh, I, if if I know the edge of the road is where I've run out of grip at, that's where I've run out of grip at. But if I can now push it that little bit further, but there's no real rhyme or reason at what point. Well, I say rhyme or reason, but there's there's no visible limit. It just suddenly runs out of grip. Yeah, I don't know. It annoys me a little bit. I said it might just be me, but... And it's only a little thing. Oh, okay, that has asked too much of it. <laughs> hey, a new personal pest. I like this car. This car is cool. The Forza Editions... I'm going to get distracted now. We're going to talk about Forza Editions. The Forza Editions are pretty cool, i got to say. Uh, there's, a, there's a few, like this one here, for example, that aren't crazy different from their normal spec. Uh, we saw the BMW. I talked about it a little bit in the um, DeLorean video. Still the BMW race car. I think this thing can get like nearly 2,000 horsepower or something ridiculous. It's wonderfully silly. Um, but, you know, okay, so that one there is, is crazy difference. You've got things like this Dodge uh, Charger. Uh, there's a Puma as, as well. Uh, that aren't that much different from a normal spec. They are a little bit different. They're not that crazy different from the normal spec. Where is the car I'm looking for? I don't know what class it is. What class is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, and there's a few like this one as well. Uh, the Mercedes, the tank pool Mercedes truck can be turned into a rally raid thing. You've got this. This is, a, is a, like a rally raid off-road spec that's like a normal 350Z, 3... 70Z, you're 350, aren't you? I think you are. <laughs> Very similar. Uh, like, yeah, normal 350Z can't quite be like this. And that's fun. There's a 911 rally car as well, and there's a few different ones around the place uh, that are that are neat, that are unlocked in different ways. Some are wheel spins, some are. Uh, the Porsche is from this car collection screen. So, again, there's another way cars are given to you. I quite like this screen, actually. You can keep track of everything. And if some of them, when you get to the end, you unlock a special car that you can't buy normally. I'm not sure. What was the Lamborghini one going to be? Uh, probably Diablo? Car Mastery. No, that's from Car Mastery Tree. So that's if you get other skill points for the car. Reventon? Okay, so yeah, the Reventon, if you get all the other Lamborghinis, you get the Reventon. It's kind of an incentive to collect all the cars. I do like this as a system. I think this is a really cool little system uh, that we have going on. Just, just, just kind of show off what you, what you've got. It's, you know, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's a fun, a fun little setup to have. Um, and you can kind of see what vehicles like. Okay, that's actually not a good example, but you can see what vehicles. Here we go. The RX-7 uh, can only be unlocked from a wheel spin or from completing an accolade. So you can kind of like if there's a car you want that you can't buy from the shop. You can figure out where you can get it from on this screen. I do like that as a system. Yeah, overall, it just gives you lots of information. What was a special one from McLaren? 720, 720S Coupe. <laughs> that would be it. The rest can be bought and so on. So, yeah, I like this. I like this as a setup. This is fun. Um, I mean, yeah, overall, overall, this is a really, as I said, this is a really very good game. There are a couple of niggles, as there are with other games. I mean, as, as far as. Uh, bugs and that sort of thing go. I haven't come across too many. Uh, I I don't know whether this is just on my end. I'm having problems with the servers in a couple of things. Now, admittedly, the game is kind of in early access. Well, not, not early, early access, but for example, I have a car club. I'm part of a car club, but I'm also not part of a car club, and I don't, I can't, like, if we go into here, it'll show that wherever my one is, oh, it's down here at the moment, it's fluctuating a lot at the moment as everyone's just starting to play the game. Like, it recognises that I'm in this one, and if I search through other ways, it shows I'm in this one, yet it doesn't come up next to my name, or doesn't show it here. I can't get into the Forzathon shop at the moment. It was working earlier when I was playing the game, and currently I can't. Uh, whether it's going to work, now I'm talking about it, it's probably going to, nope, he's just doing this. So... Yeah, I'm having a couple of issues with, with some things. I've had a couple of minor crashes, but certainly nothing crazy. Uh, this is how you unlock some of the special cars. I've got the, the A110 at the moment, for example. Uh, you've got all sorts of different things. Um, I actually quite like this as a system. It looks a little bit cluttered. You kind of figure it out as time goes on. Uh, but these are sort of your, your specific your seasonal events, if you like. And the challenges are different now. They're not just beat a certain time through certainly for, for the uh like speed traps and that sort of thing it's not just a case of beat a different target it's now beat a target with something specific which is actually kind of cool i mean i used to just have a 599 xx evo thing that would do everything so whenever a new season come around i should get that out and complete all the stunts and speed zones or whatever it was it asked me to do because that could do it whereas now for example this danger sign i've got to do it in an s1 class ford or an s2 class audi and so on and so forth which i think gives a lot of potential for for fun little challenges just, just it's a greater challenge if you like uh, so yeah there's a lot to do 
<laughs> there's an awful lot to do in here. There's there's lots of races, plenty of exploring, a fun map and everything. There are some niggles, as I said. It's not 100% perfect. There might be a couple of little bits that, uh, that, will, that will annoy you and so on. However, you can't not have fun with this game, I don't think. It's a step, it's, it's an improvement on Horizon 4, most definitely. Uh, if you're looking for really narrow, windy roads, I mean, the city has kind of got you covered. That's the only thing that... I say this about every Horizon game. I think we've all said it about every Horizon game, pretty much, is I would like to see some more, like, really technical uh, technical roads going on. And you kind of get it in the city. You don't get it elsewhere. But outside of that, yeah, the map is, is really good fun to go explore around. There's a good variety in races. Yeah, <laughs> it is. it is really bloody good. It is, it is really, really good fun indeed, this one. I mean, I've spent, since I got early access for this, playing this pretty much exclusively, and I have not even got close to getting bored with it. It gives me tons of ideas because of the freedom we get with the vehicles. Um, so, yeah, I do very, very much recommend this game. Um, it is it is difficult not to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, there might be things that annoy you a little bit, but there's way more things that you're going to be having fun with uh, than, than things that annoy you. So, there we go. That is, that is what I think about Forza Horizon 5. And that is going to be it for this, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.